Excellencies, heads of delegations, leaders of Rwanda's high institutions, distinguished friends of Rwanda, fellow Rwandans. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you all. I extend a special greeting to my sisters and brothers, heads of state and government, who graciously accepted our invitation to be part of this occasion. <laughs> Excellencies, your presence here is a shining example of African solidarity. <laughs> On behalf of the people of Rwanda, I thank you most sincerely and through you express our unwavering unity with fellow Africans across the continent. Among us here also today are friends of Rwanda from different parts of the world. We appreciate your friendship and support and consider you valuable partners in our development journey. Fellow Rwandans, I stand before you greatly honored by your renewed trust and confidence and mindful of the responsibility you have bestowed upon me to lead our country in this new mandate and the new challenges that come with it. I pledge to do my best as I have always tried in order to meet your expectations. Excellencies, dear friends, one month ago, Rwandans made their choice in the most emphatic and unequivocal manner. They freely exercised their inalienable right to make decisions for themselves, especially those that most affect their lives. It is this will of our people that is the sole basis of the authority of government. For more than a decade and a half now, the people of this country have increasingly come together as one to determine and shape their destiny. They demonstrated their willingness to put national interests above all else through a clear vote for unity, reconciliation, and social economic transformation. <laughs> However, in the months and weeks preceding our elections, there was an onslaught of bad press reports from sections of media and human rights organizations as if, or let me say that deliberately misrepresented the situation in Rwanda and sought to give the impression that there was something terrible wrong going on in our country, so to speak, as if the country was really falling apart. This led some to expect an eruption of violence 
in line with the prejudiced way in which African affairs are viewed. But Rwandans know what it means to sink to the lowest level possible. And we have learned lessons the hard way. Over time, and with the progress made, Rwandans have redefined themselves and are determined to forge ahead. They made their point defiantly by campaigning emphatically and enthusiastically and voting in peace. The experience of starting from a very low base has shown us that rapid progress can only be achieved when the people for whom it is intended are mobilized and participate fully in development efforts. That in itself is a democratic process. Without, we have seen tangible improvement of living conditions, expansion of access to education and health services for all, our system of decentralization, as well as investments in information and communication technologies are giving Rwandans a greater voice and opening them up to the world. All these factors are empowering citizens in a way that has not been seen in our recent history. Why then? should there be a contradiction between development and democracy. In fact, we hold the view that you cannot have sustainable social economic development without corresponding growth in democratic governance. And in turn, political rights without a matching reduction of poverty and improved quality of life would be meaningless. There is no doubt that we face many problems in Africa, and the biggest one of all is not the lack of democracy, but poverty. And the dependence that comes with underdevelopment. It is this situation of dependence that allows some governments and even non-government organizations who are not accountable to anyone themselves to think they have the right to dictate the conduct of legitimate state actors. African governments are often accused of being corrupt and not responsive to the needs of our populations. But when we do what every government is expected to do, deliver services, instill accountability, transparency, and efficiency, build social and economic infrastructure, and raise living standards, the goalposts change. <laughs>